everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and welcome back to the last day of our Book a Day series featuring Asian American Pacific Islander children's books. For our very last read aloud of the week, we have our story, Cora Cook's Pun Seat. Now this story is going to be about Filipino culture and Filipino food, and my friends, I am half Filipino, so some of the foods we're going to talk about in this book I have eaten before, and you might have eaten them too if you've ever had Filipino food before. Do you know if you've had Filipino food before? If you have, what kind have you had? Well, if you haven't, it's delicious. I suggest you try. Remember, it's always fun to try new foods. So yesterday's read aloud also had to do with food. That's to do with the Chinese bao, and we learned a little bit about how to make Chinese bao. Today, we're going to be learning about pancit, this Filipino noodle dish. And the story will take us through how Cora is going to be able to cook maybe the perfect dish of pancit. We'll see. My friends, do you like to eat noodles or pasta dishes? Yeah, what kind of noodles or pastas do you like? Those ones are good. So pansi is this Filipino noodle dish and it's made from what they call these rice stick noodles. So these are the noodles. And then it's mixed with vegetables and meat sometimes and then all these spices to make it flavorful. Have you ever cooked a noodle dish before, my friends, or a pasta dish? Yeah, what kind have you cooked? That sounds delicious. Well, if you haven't, again, I encourage you to give it a try. And at the back of this book, just like the one yesterday, there's going to be a recipe of how to make pansi. So if you'd like to try, maybe pause at the end of the video when I show you the recipe, that'd be a fun thing to do. Now, foods that people eat can be an important part of culture. And that's why some of the books we've read this week have to do with cooking and about different items that these families eat together. Is there something special that your family eats that's like a special dish that's part of your family meal? If you do have one, describe it to me. What is it? What's it like? What's it taste like? How do you make it? Ooh, sounds amazing, my friends, and like a very special dish. Okay, let's check out a quick look at what's in the back of our reading studio, and then we'll get started. So today, I mainly just have our big bowl of noodles or four noodles there's not actually noodles in it but just kind of like how Cora's got this big bowl of noodles I brought a big bowl too and I have my mixing spoon she's using a wooden spoon on the cover if you see she's stirring her noodles and this is a bowl that I would put my pancit noodles in if I had a whole bunch and stir it with the stick and I can also use this while I'm reading along to help me pretend to make pancit noodles too if you want to grab a mixing bowl for pretend and a spoon to pretend that you're making pancit along with Cora, then I suggest you pause the video right here and go grab one. So go ahead and do that if you'd like to. All right. Well, if you're ready, then I think we're about to get started. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Cora Cooks Pancit, written by Dorina K. Lazo Gilmore and illustrated by Christy Valiant. So remember, two different names on the cover means that one person wrote all the words and one person drew all of the pictures. Who writes the words, my friends, the author or the illustrator? The author, that's right. What does the illustrator do? Do you remember? Illustrator draws all the pictures. And I see right over here, it says a little sticker that says recipe included. So it's gonna have a recipe in the back. A recipe is all the directions that you need to make a dish or to make a plate of food. I'm wondering, my friends, what ingredients are going to be in Ponset? Remember, we talked about the word ingredients yesterday. Ingredients are all the different foods that you need to cook your dish. So if you take a look at the bowl of pancit here, what ingredients do you think you need for this dish? Yeah, noodles, looks like some veggies, some meat, maybe some salt and pepper, right, to season it and wondering what else. All right, my friends. Well, in this story, there's going to be some Tagalog words. So Tagalog is a Filipino language. And actually, in the Philippines, there are more than 200 different dialects and languages that they speak on the islands of the Philippines. So Tagalog is just one of the languages, one of the dialects. And some of the words in here are going to be Tagalog words. And we'll go over them and we'll share what they mean. So get to learn a few Tagalog words and a little bit about some Filipino dishes. All right. Sounds good. Okay, let's begin. So here we have our title page, Cora Cooks Pancit. And it has our author and illustrator. And who is this? That looks like Cora, right? Looks like the same girl from the cover of the book. And what is she holding? 
the bowl of Ponzi. All right, so here we go. And looking at this first page, my friends, before we even read the words, what do you notice? Yeah, I see. First of all, there's a bunch of different people in the kitchen, right? It looks like they're all cooking. And then who's who's over here, though? That looks like Cora. And what is she doing? Licking the spoon. <gasps> Wait a minute. I'm wondering why is Cora sitting over here against the wall instead of in the kitchen? What do you think? Maybe. I'm noticing that all of these people, do they look like older people or younger people than Cora? They all look taller and older. Cora looks like she's probably the smallest, the little one. Maybe, maybe she's too little to be in the kitchen. Now let's read the words. Cora loved the kitchen. Do you love the kitchen? She loved to drink in the smells of Mama's Filipino dishes. Mmm, kitchen has some delicious smells that come from it, huh, my friends? What's one of your favorite smells that comes from the kitchen? You know, I love the smell of banana bread from the kitchen. I think that smells amazing. Cora's older sisters and brother often helped with the cooking. They got the grown-up jobs like shredding the chicken or mixing the noodles in the pot. They sliced vegetables and rolled lumpia into tidy egg roll shapes. So lumpia is another Filipino dish, and it kind of looks like an egg roll. If you've seen one of those, they're long and skinny, filled with meat and vegetables, and it's fried. It's delicious. So it sounds like older sisters and brother get to do all the grown-up things. Hmm, so what does that leave for Cora to do? Lick spoons. Maybe those are little kid jobs. Cora was stuck with the kid jobs like drawing pictures in the flower or licking spoons. She longed to be a real cook. What do you think she means by a real cook? What does a real cook get to do, according to Cora? Yeah, it sounds like the real cook would get to mix the noodles or shred the chicken like the older sisters and brothers, or maybe roll the lumpia. Does she even get to really touch the food that much? No, she just does the flour. My friends, if you help out in the kitchen, do you get the grown-up jobs or do you think you get kid jobs? What are some of the jobs you do in the kitchen? If you haven't had a chance to help out in the kitchen, maybe you can start. Ask if you can help out next time. It's really fun to cook. Well, one day, Cora's three older sisters headed out to the mall. Her brother darted outside with his ball glove. Now was her chance. <gasps> her chance for what? Maybe her chance to help out. Brothers and sisters aren't there anymore. Cora popped her head into the corner. What are we making today, Mama? Mama wiped her hands on the front of her red apron. She put her hands on her hips. You want to try? Put your hands on your hips. What would you like to make today? Asked Mama in her buttery voice. So what do you think a buttery voice sounds like? Can you try to say, what would you like to make today in a buttery voice? Ready? Three, two, one. Ooh, that sounds very buttery. And what do you think Cora is going to want to make? Ponzi, probably. Ooh, but look at all of these different foods she's thinking of. Cora was surprised Mama was letting her decide. She scrunched up her pug nose and began to think. So she scrunched up her nose. She wrinkled it. My friends, can you scrunch your nose? So she's thinking, she's thinking like that. All her favorite Filipino foods danced in her head. What kind of foods do you see here? See some egg rolls. This must be the lumpia. Some chicken here. The noodles. So the foods are dancing in her head. Lines of lumpia pranced in a row. So pranced means jumping along gracefully, my friends. Can you prance? It's like small, tiny, pretty hops. Adobo chicken legs bebopped in time. So adobo is a type of chicken dish in the Philippines. And the chicken legs are bebopping. <laughs> My friends, can you bebop? And then she saw a large bowl of ponce. The thick noodles and vegetables curled and swirled in a dance party. <gasps> Look at those curlies and swirlings. So pretend you're a noodle, my friends, and curl and swirl. 
<laughs> what a curly swirly noodle you are. Mmm, that crap. Ah, look how delicious all those foods look. My friends, which one would you choose to make? Lumpia, adobo, or pancit? Hard choice. They all look good. Well, will you teach me how to make Ponzi? Cora asked. Of course, said Mama. Would you like to wear my red apron? <gasps> what do you think Cora's going to say? Yes, please. Cora was a real cook now. The apron was a little too big, but it would do. Mama helped Cora tie the strings around her back and make a neat bow at her belly button. So, my friends, usually where do you tie an apron? Do you tie it in the front or the back? Usually you tie it in the back, but if the strings are too long, maybe you can loop it around again, and then if you tie it in the front, it's just the right length. Good thinking, Mama. Ooh, I see some photographs here, and what do you notice about these photographs? Maybe about what color they are? There's not that much color in them, right? They're kind of like black and white photos. They're black and white photos. Does that mean they're really old or they're kind of new photos? Old photos. This apron belonged to your Lolo, your grandpa. So Lolo is how you say grandpa in Tagalog. Can you try, my friends? Say Lolo. Yeah. He wore it when he first came to California. He was a cook for the Filipino farm workers who picked strawberries and grapes in the fields. So in California, a lot of Filipino people who moved to California worked in the fields. They were farm workers picking fruits and vegetables. So he was a cook for all those people who worked in the fields. So that apron must be super special, right? It's from the grandpa, and then now the mom has it, and now who gets to wear it? Cora. Did Lolo teach you how to cook? Cora wanted to know. He did, said Mama. I followed him each day to the big kitchen. He created all kinds of dishes to fill the hungry workers' tummies. While he cooked, he told stories about the Philippines where he was born. Cora nodded as she listened. Lolo told us all about the countryside where he grew up. His family harvested pineapples, bananas, and papayas. Mm, my friends, have you tried any of those fruits? Which ones do you like? Yeah. So his family sounds like they had a farm, maybe where they harvested, they planted and grew pineapples, bananas, and papayas. And he used to eat smashed fried banana and sweet rice wrapped in banana leaves. So that sounds like some other Filipino dishes, my friends, where they take bananas, they smash them up, and then they fry them. So it's like a sweet fried dish. Or they take rice and they wrap it up in the banana leaves. Mm. I've tried some of those before. You might want to try those too. Those are really good sweet treats. Cora stuffed her hands deep into the apron pockets. She imagined Mama and Lolo cooking together. She saw Lolo as a boy unwrapping the banana leaves and scooping up the sweet rice inside. So here, my friends, I can see what Cora is imagining. And here he is. This is kind of what the sweet rice and the banana leaves looks like. Here's the leaf and the little rice is in it. And, oh, this must be Mama and Lolo, and this is what Cora's imagining. Hmm. So Cora's wearing this apron that has special memories between Mama and her grandpa, Lolo. Well, Cora knew the rules of Mama's kitchen. What did she have to do first? Gotta wash your hands. She scrubbed her hands with soap. And Mama dug in the cupboards and refrigerator for the ingredients. Do you remember what ingredients are? the items and foods you need to make your dish. She listed what they needed for the ponce. Okay, are you ready? We're gonna find out what the ingredients for ponce are. So you can mark them off with your fingers with me. There's chicken, celery, carrots, mushrooms, onions, baby corn, cabbage, ginger, garlic, and soy sauce. So how many ingredients was that, my friends? Were you keeping count? There is exactly 10 ingredients. Let's see how good your memory was. How many of the ingredients can you remember? Mm. Nice memory. So there was chicken, celery, carrots, mushrooms, baby corn, onions, cabbage, ginger, garlic, soy sauce. Mm. And don't forget the noodles, said Cora. <gasps> That's right, you can't forget the noodles. That's Potsdi, the noodle dish. Oh yes, said Mama, the noodles. Oh, Mama almost forgot the noodles. Good thing Cora is there to help. Let's get started, Mama told Cora. So let's see what they do first. What do you think it looks like here? It's like they're putting something in the bowl. Hmm. Open the package of rice noodles and put them in this bowl of water. 
Do you know why we soak them? What do you think, my friends? Here they are putting these noodles into the water. Looks like they're kind of hard noodles. Why do they soak the noodles? To maybe make them softer. So they get soft, answered Cora. You've been paying attention, said Mama with a wink. Cora opened the package. She plopped the big clump of noodles into the bowl. So, plop. Can you try? Plop. That's step one. Put the noodles in the water to soak. Ooh, and here's the next step. What does it look like Cora's doing here? Yeah, it kind of looks like she's taking a little taste of something, but what is it? Ooh, it looks like chicken. Meanwhile, Mama took out some chicken that she had cooked earlier. This was Mama's special stash. So her special set of chicken that she saves. She used chicken for all kinds of Filipino dishes like tang hon, a chicken curry, and lumpia, the egg rolls. Want to help me shred the chicken? asked Mama. And what do you think Cora said? Because remember, that was a grown-up thing to do. Cora's eyes grew wide. <gasps> Can you open your eyes wide? What do you think that means if she opens her eyes wide? Kind of like, oh, I get to shred the chicken. A grown-up job. She was ready. She pulled the chicken pieces apart like she saw her older sister Prim do. She placed them on a plate and Cora snuck a tiny bit of chicken. She rolled it to the back of her mouth though before Mama noticed. The salty taste tickled her tongue. So it sounds like this chicken is nice and salty. My friends, if you're cooking in the kitchen, sometimes do you take a little nibble to taste? I do. And what are they doing next? It's like that to chop the vegetables. I'll chop, said Mama. Cora arranged the vegetables in neat rows. Mama chopped celery stalks, carrots, cabbage, and onions. When Mama started slicing onions, tears ran down Cora's cheeks. She looked up and saw Mama's watery eyes. Onions make us cry, sang Mama. They both laughed. My friends, that's true. Have you ever tried to cut an onion before? For some reason, when you cut onions, they release like this scent or something. Something comes from the onion and it makes your eyes water a lot. It makes it look like you're crying. If you haven't chopped an onion before, my friends, maybe try it. Or stand next to an adult while they chop the onion and then you might notice your eyes start to water. Then, Mama took out her huge pancit pan with the shiny copper outside and the big handles. The pan was big enough to hold all the ingredients and Cora stood on her tiptoes to see on the inside. But Mama asked Cora to step back as she added some vegetables and oil to the pan. Why do you think she has Cora step back when she does that? Because maybe when it cooks it gets super hot, right? So she just has her step back a little bit. The pot began to hiss and sizzle. Mama added spices too. Garlic, ginger, and a splash of soy sauce. Mmm, Cora loved the smell of garlic. Oh, I love the smell of garlic too. Remember they used garlic in the bow yesterday also? And then, uh-oh, what is Cora doing? Looks like she's supposed to get the noodles, but oh, what happens? Spills a little bit of water. It's kind of full, right? Can you check the noodles, Cora? Asked Mama. Cora scratched her head. She tried to remember what her sister Sarah did when she checked the noodles. Cora thought she should sniff the noodles, but she picked up the bowl too quickly and what happened? Water sloshed, water spilled onto the floor. Are you making a mess? asked Mama with pointy eyebrows. What does that mean, pointy eyebrows? Can you show me pointy eyebrows? Maybe kind of like this, kind of like, why are you making a mess? Silly Cora, you just need to touch the noodles with two fingers to see if they're soft. Oh, so does Cora need to sniff them? No. To check them, what does she need to do? Just poke them with her fingers and see if they're soft, right? Mama laughed and handed Cora a towel to mop up the mess. Then Mama went to work straining the noodles. So straining means getting all the water out, so drying them. Usually there's like a pot that has a lot of holes in it. Have you seen one of those? And when you put something in it, all the water comes out and the other stuff stays in the pot. Have you used one? That's a strainer. What have you strained before, my friends? Yeah. So Mama's drying the noodles, straining the noodles. And look at this page. What does this page remind you of? Kind of reminds me of the cover, right? 
Now for the fun part, said Mama. Let's add the noodles to the punsy pan. Can I stir, asked Cora. She knew this was a grown-up job. Stirring, right? Does it look like she gets to stir? Yes, but be careful near the burner, called Mama, who pulled out a stool for Cora to stand on. Cora began to stir in a wide circle. So wide means a big circle, my friends. Can you get your stirrer? Or pretend you got your stirrer and make a wide circle. So Cora began to stir in a wide circle. She watched the noodles somersault over carrots and celery. She made the soft onion sway this way and that. The smell of ginger mixed with garlic floated to her nose. Mmm, a few mushrooms escaped the pot. <gasps> Oops! Ah, so sometimes when you're stirring something really full, some things fall out. That's okay. Wow, my friends, what beautiful imagery. What cool words they use to describe her stirring. Noodles somersaulting over carrots. Onions swaying back and forth as she's stirring. I love stirring the pot. My friends, when you cook in the kitchen, do you ever get to stir? What kinds of things do you stir? Maybe you get to stir cookie dough or pancake batter. And now what's happening? It looks like it is dinner time and everyone is back home and they've got this big dish of ponce on the table. What else do they have on the table that they're eating? Looks like they also have some lumpia here and maybe some chicken adobo. So maybe mom got to make all of them, but Cora just got to help with the ponce, right? Well, my friends, how do you think the ponce turned out? Do you think the family's going to like it? Looks like Cora did a good job, right? That night, mama brought the food to the table. She set out a platter of adobo chicken, two plates of her special lumpia with dipping sauce, ooh, and a bowl of pineapple slices. Hmm, maybe for dessert. Do you like pineapple? Cora's brothers and sisters came to the table one by one. Daddy sat in his usual spot at the head of the table. So, at the end of the table. Cora watched his eyes grow wide. <gasps> There's those wide eyes again. As he checked out all of the food, he licked his lips. Mm. My friends, can you lick your lips? Why do you think his eyes grew wide when he saw all the food? How was he feeling? Probably like, oh my goodness, this all looks so delicious. Wow. Finally, Mama set the steamy platter of pancit in the middle of the table. You made pancit without us, hollered Cora's brother, Crispin. Well, who did my job, asked Prim. Who checked the noodles Sarah needed to know? Mama replied, Cora did all the grown-up jobs. Really, said Daddy. That's my girl. Cora scrunched together her eyebrows and bit her lip while the family tasted her pancit. Why do you think she's scrunching her eyebrows and biting her lips? How does she feel as they taste it? Probably kind of nervous. Why might she be nervous? Because she wants them to like it, right? Well, did she do everything right? Would they like it? Would Mama tell them about the accident with the noodles? <sighs> what was the accident, do you remember? She just spilled a little water, right? And how does the family feel about the noodles? Looks like they like it, huh? How can you tell? Let's look at their happy faces, right? And it looks like they're eating it. Mmm. Pretty impressive, smiled Cora's sister, Irene. So impressive means, ooh, this is really good. Crispin chomped on a big spoonful of ponce and elbowed Cora. Not too bad, Crispin said. Cora grinned. Her eyes sparkled with delight, with happiness. Daddy sat back in his chair. This tastes like your Lolo's ponce. He said, what a nice compliment, my friends, because remember, Lolo was such a good chef. Cora beamed with pride. Salamat, she said. Thank you. That's how you say thank you in Tagalog, my friends. Can you say salamat? Salamat. Yes, that's the way to say thank you. The family laughed, and Cora was still wearing Mama's red apron. The end, my friends. What a happy ending. So were her noodles successful? Yes, she got to make this dish that was actually really special because it's a dish that her mom and her grandpa, her Lolo, used to make together. So then mom got to share this experience of cooking with her own daughter. Mom got to cook with her own dad, with Cora's grandpa. And then mom got to share that with Cora, her own daughter. Hmm. And Cora, in the meantime, got to do the grown-up things and learn about her grandpa, a little bit about her Lolo, 
get to share the apron that Lolo wore, and then got to make this delicious Filipino dish for her family. And it looks so good, huh, my friends? It's making me hungry for some ponce. Well, I told you at the back they have a recipe for ponce. So if you look here, it has all the ingredients and directions. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see. And if you wanna pause the video and take a look at the recipe, you can do that or maybe take a picture of it if you wanna try to make it yourself. And my friends, if you do cook ponce and have some, my friends, I would love to see it and hear all about it. So please share with me. Remember, you can always reach out to me on YouTube, on my email, on the blog, on Instagram, Facebook. All those media links can be found down below. I'd love to hear about your cooking adventures. All right, my friends. So that brings us to the end of this read aloud. Our last read aloud of this book a day series. I've had so much fun sharing these stories with all of you and I hope you've enjoyed reading them too. What was your favorite part about this one? Yeah. I liked how we learned about how to make another dish, pancit, and I really liked in the end how the whole family sat together and they enjoyed all the food and they were so proud of Cora for making a delicious dish, huh? My friends, have you ever cooked dinner for your family? What did you make? They are so lucky. If you haven't cooked dinner for your family before, friends, maybe try it out. It's really fun and you get a really nice feeling inside, especially when they enjoy what you eat and you get to see all your family eating something that you put a lot of hard work into. Makes you feel good inside. All right, my friends. Well, you got to learn some Tagalog words for some food and you got to see some of the Filipino dishes. It's making me pretty hungry, so I think I'm going to go get a snack. And remember, crafts are going to come out for these books. I don't have them up yet, but please be checking back in on my blog, on Instagram, here on YouTube for updates for when new crafts are released. Also, please be sure to subscribe to my Storybooks YouTube channel to keep up with all of our reading adventures. I'm hoping to do another Book A Day series soon, but until we do another one of those, I always have new interactive read alouds coming out on Fridays. So be sure to check back in on those days. And if you subscribe, then you can find them super easily and join us for another read along. Okay, well, my friends, if you missed any of the books in our Book A Day series, you can always go back. All of the read alouds for this week are under the heading Book a Day Celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. So you can find all the read alouds for this week in there. Well, it has come to the end of our reading adventure today. So my friends, I hope that you get to enjoy some good food. Maybe enjoy some fun cooking with some family members. Stay safe and healthy. As always, enjoy this time with your family that you have. And until next time, my friends, happy reading.